Hello everyone. In this talk, I thought I would share with you <clears throat> a story about that's very appropriate for right now because it's about commencement. And that's one thing that's not going to happen right now because of the quarantine. A lot of graduations and their ceremonies are not going to happen. And one author posted on Facebook, she asked, if you could give a commencement address, what would you say? So I imagine a whole bunch of high school seniors out there listening or college graduates listening. And so I'm going to give you a commencement speech that I actually wrote that I was going to give over at ASU a long time ago. And I thought I would share it with you. The person who was selected actually should have been selected. She was amazing. But I will share with you the commencement speech that I was going to give had I been selected. And it's called Count the Cost. A long time ago, I asked myself, how would I define success? And my answer was completion. How would you define success? A mansion high on the hill, having a third house, maybe one in Paris, France, you know, or a whole bunch of money in the bank, fast cars in the garage, a prestigious career, a whole bunch of degrees framed and hung on your wall. How would you define success? For me, it means completion. I'm one of those people who loves school. I'm a freak, I know. I used to cry on the last day of school when I was a kid, and my siblings used to look at me as though I was insane. Why are you crying, they say. It's the first day of summer break. And I say, because I'm gonna miss my favorite teachers and I'm gonna miss my friends. I just always loved school. So going to college, that was definitely something that I wanted to do. And luckily, I won two scholarships to go to college, and off I went. But my third year in college, I left and I got married and I went off and had a life. And no matter what I accomplished in life, I still felt like a failure because I never completed my college degree. So no matter what I did, I had this little gray cloud following me everywhere saying, yeah, but you never finished your degree. And then I started getting high, uh, college announcements, graduation announcements in the mail from my friends who were graduating. And I would open them up and look at them and think, you know, that should be me. That should be me. So years later, all this went on and I constantly felt like a failure. And then one time I had a conversation with my one of my favorite aunts and she said, you need to go back to school. If that's your dream, go back to school. And I came up with the usual excuses. We don't have enough money. I'm a mom to a little boy. I have to work. What am I going to do? And with every excuse, she kept challenging me, do it, do it, it's important to you, it's your dream, you've got to do it. And then look at what you'll have, an education, and no one can take that away from you. Well, I listened to her, and I announced to my husband, I'm going back to college. And we didn't have any money, but that was right at the height of the uh, housing boom, and so we were able to sell our house, and I had some money to go back to school. But because it was the height of the <laughs> housing boom, we couldn't afford to get another house. So we had to move into an apartment. So we went from a 1,500 square foot apartment to a 900 square foot, uh, a 1,500 square foot house to a 900 square foot apartment. And being an art major, all my art stuff was everywhere. All my art projects were everywhere. So the three of us were living in this tiny little apartment. And it was tough, but I was able to go to school and I was at school from 8 in the morning until sometimes 11.30 at night because I wanted to get this degree over with. And I did summer school. So I would drop my son off at school, then rush to be a reading tutor, and then do some janitorial work, and then rush to go to my classes, and then come home at about 11.30 at night, exhausted, night after night, day after day. It was so hard. And then one night I came into the apartment and my son had left me a note on the countertop and it was a little boy handwriting and it said, Mommy, when you get home, please wake me up so that I can hug you. Oh, and my heart just broke because I missed him so much. And my husband was having to be both mom and dad to our son and he was exhausted too. So after semesters of this, I sat at the kitchen table doing my homework. It was about a midnight and I was so exhausted. And I just cried and I said, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Is it even worth it? For what? A piece of paper that I'm going to hang on the wall? I mean, I'm missing my son. I'm missing my husband. 
you know, I could be working full time and then we could have a house and my son could have a backyard and a front yard to play in. He could ride his bike and have friends instead of living in this apartment with no other kids around. What am I doing? This is insane. And then I decided, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to quit tomorrow. I'm going to go to the registrar's office and drop out. And then I'm going to get a full-time job and we'll have money again. I'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to get a house and have a life. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to finish my homework because I'm a good student and that's what good students do. So I pulled out my American literature folder and I opened it up to look at the syllabus to see what my homework assignment was. And it was to read an essay by Booker T. Washington called Struggle for an Education. And then I had to write a paper about that essay. So I thought, okay, here we go. So I read it. And as I read it, I could not believe the story of this man's struggle for a college education. Booker T. Washington was raised as a slave and he was free at age nine. And his mother took him to this town where he could, where they had schools for little freed African-American kids to learn. And he learned his ABCs and his one, two, threes. And he would come home and show his mom how to write in the dirt of their home. That was their floor, a dirt floor. And he would show her with his finger how to write A, B, C. When he was 16, she sent him to West Virginia to work in the coal mines with a whole bunch of other freed slaves. And there he also got a job working, helping to clean out a rich woman's house. And in that house, she would have him wear gloves and dust her whole house and sweep the floors. She was very, very strict and he would sweep the floors and then she'd come back and she'd say, nope, not good enough, do it again. So he'd sweep the floors again and she'd say, no, still not good enough, do it again. And he wrote how he grew to hate that she was just so strict. And one day inside the mines, he heard all these whisperings going around and he asked what's going on. And all these men were whispering and they came over to him and they said, we heard that there's a college in Virginia for freed slaves. And all of us want you to go. So they passed the hat and they gathered enough money. And even the rich white woman that he swept the floors for, even she gave money to send him to this college. And so he boarded the train with as much money as he had, and he started his trek down to Virginia, but the money ran out, so he had to hop off the train and walk the rest of the way. But because of the color of his skin, he couldn't sleep in any of the hotels, and he couldn't eat at any of the restaurants. He had to go around the back of the restaurant where they were throwing out scraps to the dogs, and that's how he ate. And he would offer people to sweep the sidewalks in front of their stores for a few pennies. And he was really good at sweeping, he'd say. And he slept on the sidewalks at night. And he finally, finally walked all the way to Virginia to attend this college. And when he walked in the front doors, he was a mess, right? And the front receptionist said, can I help you? And he said, I want to go to school here, but I have no money. But I can work. I can work for tuition if you let me. And he looked around and he saw other African-American kids with books under their arms walking around and he thought, yes, I want to go to school here. I want to get an education. So she called over the dean and the dean looked at him and said, can, what can you do? Can you sweep the floors? And he said, yes, that's one thing I'm really good at. So they gave him a broom and he swept the floors spotless. And the dean said, okay, you can go to school here if you work as our janitor. And he did. And he graduated and then he went on to get his master's degree there and then he ended up teaching there until at age 25 Booker T Washington and a friend started their own school called the Tuskegee Institute and he was passionate about educating former slaves and their children and he didn't want them to just learn reading writing and arithmetic he wanted them to learn agriculture so he had classes about farming how to be a farmer and he had classes about how to, you know, create the best soil for planting seeds and everything. And he taught them how to build things. He wanted them to not just learn reading, writing, and science, but he wanted them to have a vocation when they graduated. So you can imagine I'm reading this essay at like one in the morning with tears just streaming down my face. Because you see, I'm the first person in my immediate family to go to college. 
and I was this close to finishing and here I wanted to quit. Why? Because I had to live in an apartment? At least I had a roof over my head, right? I had food in my belly. My son was healthy. My husband was there willing to help me. I could do this. I could do this. And so I said, yes. For my grandparents, my grandfather was a migrant worker with an eighth grade education. And he had to work in the fields, pulling, you know, the fruits and the, and the vegetables and putting them in a truck and driving them out to California and back. And I used to see the calluses on his hands unbelievable hard worker and my dad and his siblings worked in the fields as migrant workers and here I had a chance to to go to college and I was willing to just throw it all away for what for what and I realized how crazy I was being so I got on the computer and I wrote out an email to my instructor my American literature instructor and I thanked him for assigning that essay I said I was so close to quitting but because of you and assigning that essay because I read that essay by Booker T Washington I'm gonna stick with it I'm gonna stick with it and I'm gonna graduate for my grandparents and my great-grandparents who never had the chance I'm gonna be the first you know I'm a Mexican woman I'm gonna be the first person in my call in my family to graduate with a degree and I thanked him and then I sent I sent that email to him and I was going to go to bed and then bling, a reply came back at like one o'clock in the morning. I thought, what? And I opened it up and he said, Ruth, thank you. I want to thank you so much for that email because I was this close to quitting as a faculty, as a teacher here at ASU because I, I just thought, what am I doing this for? I'm creating these assignments and none of my students are getting anything out of them. They don't care. And then I got your email and you told me how, what an impact one of my assignments had on you. And he said, I can't quit. I can't quit. And then he encouraged me and he said, don't worry. You're going to get that house. You're going to have a life. You know, he said, I didn't have my first house till I was 50 years old. <laughs> he said, so don't worry. It's going to happen for you. And so I persevered. I persevered and I went on and I graduated. I graduated with honors and so and so there's a picture of my son and my husband and myself at graduation and that was a great day I'll never forget it and the teacher who called my name to come up to come up on the stage was Dr. Hattenhauer that teacher that I emailed that night my American literature teacher and he handed me my diploma and shook my hand and I'll never forget that day. So, I want to encourage you, those of you who have made it, congratulations. You have completed something that not everybody can, and you have done it. So consider yourself a success. It doesn't matter how much money you make, it doesn't matter how many houses you own, None of that matters. You have something now, an education, that no one can take away from you. So those of you who are getting ready to begin that journey called college, count the cost. It does come at a, at a high price, but it's worth it. It'll be hard at times, and you'll want to quit, but don't keep going because it opens up so many doors of opportunity for you that not everybody gets. I often think that if my grandfather could stand before me, he'd say, I'm proud of you, Miha. I'm glad that you did that because I never had a chance, but you did. So I've gone on to get my master's degree, working on another master's degree education. I love school. I've always been that type of person who loves school and I'll probably keep going. And so I hope that I've encouraged you and motivated you and inspired you to never quit to never give up, to keep going until you reach your dreams.